Okay, so in this video, I'm going to have a look at um, doing some definite integrals. I'm going to look at two or three examples of how you would actually work out definite integrals. So first one I'm going to do is this one here. We have the function uh, x cubed plus 3x squared, and we're going to integrate this function between 0 and 1. So this is the function here. It's a cubic equation, and um, a cubic function rather, and we're going to look at the area under the curve between 0, x is equal to 0, and x is equal to 1 here. So that's what a definite integral does, or integration does. It finds the areas underneath these curves here. So I uh, just shaded in the area that we're looking for here. So let's have a look at doing this. So um, first of all, we want to integrate x cubed. That's just simply x to the power of 4 over 4. Then I'm going to integrate 3x squared. That's uh, 3x cubed divided by 3. So that's it really, and we are going from 0 to 1. So next thing we want to do then is just do this out where we substitute in 1 for x and then 0 for x and uh, subtract the 2. So let's do that. So we have uh, 1 to the power of 4 over 4 plus 3 times 1 to the power of 3 over 3. And then we want to subtract what we get when we substitute in 0. So we put 0 to the power of 4 over 4 plus 3 times 0 to the power of 3 over 3. And that's it done. So let's do this out. Well, 1 to the power of 4 is 4. So we end up with 1 over 4 here plus 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 to the power of 3 is 1. So we just end up with 1 there. Now we want to subtract this lot here. Well, this is just going to be zero, really, because you've got a zero on top of the fraction here. You've got zero on top of the fraction here multiplied by three. That's just zero. So we just end up subtracting zero. So our answer is one plus a quarter, which is one and a quarter. So this here, then, is our answer. And this is uh, effectively the area underneath the curve here between zero and one and above the x-axis. So that's the first uh, first question done. Let's have a look at another one here. Now, in this case, I'm going to integrate a trigonometric function here, sine of x. So we're going to integrate sine of x. And I have the graph of it here. This is the uh, standard graph of sine of x. Um, and we're using radians here. So this is 90 degrees, or pi over 2 here in this case. And this is pi here. Don't worry about these other ticks here. This is pi over 2 sine of uh, pi over 2 or sine of 90 degrees is 1 sine of pi here 180 degrees is 0. okay so let's do this anyway we're going to um, integrate sine of x well if you integrate sine of x you get minus cos x so we are going to end up with minus cosine minus cos of x that's our integral and we want to do it between uh, 0 and pi over 2 so that this is what we've got to do here. So let's do that then. OK, so we have minus the cos of pi over 2. And then we want to subtract minus the cos of 0. So we substituted in pi over 2 and we substituted in 0 and we're subtracting the 2. So let's do that. Well, we have minus the cos of pi over 2, the cosine of pi over 2. Uh, the cosine of pi over 2, or the cos of 90 degrees, uh, is just 0. Uh, so that's this bit done. And then we have minus, minus, which is plus, And we're looking at the cosine of the cos of 0. The cos of 0 is 1. So we just simply end up with minus 0 plus 1, which is 1. OK, so in other words, the area under the graph here between uh, 0 and pi over 2. So this area in here is just 1, 1 unit, whatever units we happen to be using. OK, so that's the second one done. Let's have a look at another one then. In this case, I'm going to have a look at um, the integral of the integral of, whoops, we'll do this in white, I think. Let's see, we'll go back to white again. Okay, so we're going to look at the integral uh, between 
0 and 3, so 0 and 3 of the square root, 1 over the square root of 9 minus x squared, 9 minus x squared. Okay, so in this case, uh, the dx's there are numerators. So the way, the way you can actually write this is between 0 and 3, 1 over the square root of 9 minus x squared dx. It's the same thing. Here we just have the dx as our numerator. Here I've uh, taken out the um, numerator. Just call it dx here on its own if you like. Multiply by dx over 1 if you like. So we want to integrate this function here between 0 and 3. So let's do that. Now, um, if you integrate, uh, let me just uh, give you the general rule for this type of thing first of all. If you have a function that looks like this, if you have a function that's 1 over, let's say we'll do this in a different color just to keep it separate. Um, so we'll say 1 over the square root, the square root of a squared minus x squared. If you want to integrate this function here with respect to x, it's just simply uh, sine inverse, sine inverse of x over a. So this is our general rule, and there will be a constant of integration here as well. But since we're doing definite integrals, the constants of integration cancel each other out when we do this subtraction here. So um, this is an indefinite integral here that I'm, I'm just showing the general rule. So this is our general rule for integrating this kind of function here. So this is what I'm going to do here. Now, I'm going to have to rewrite this slightly. Uh, I'm just going to rewrite this as the integral from 0 to 3 of 1 over the square root of, now remember I need an a squared here, but I've got a 9, so I'm going to call that 3 squared minus x squared with respect to x. So now I have written, I've rewritten this function here like this, something a squared minus x squared on the bottom here, 3 squared minus x squared. So now we can just use this rule to do this integration here. So let's do that. Now, there are a number of other ones similar to this, and you can find these, uh, these integrals in the mathematical tables or the log tables. So um, I won't go through them all. This is just one example. So let's see. Um, we need to integrate this here, so let's do that. Um, so we'll do our square brackets again. Uh, now, we want, we're going to end up with sine inverse x. So we have an x here. That's fine. So we're going to write down our x over our a. Now in this case, our a is 3. So we're going to put in a 3 here. And we're integrating between 0 and 3. So between 0 and 3. So this is what we need to do here. So let's do that then. So uh, sine inverse. So we've got sine inverse. x is 3. So it's going to be 3 over 3. So that's one part of it. And then we're going to subtract. We've got to substitute 0 in now. So it's sine inverse um, x, uh, sorry, it's sine inverse, or x in this case uh, happens to be 0. So we're going to put in 0 here over our a, which is uh, 3. So this is what we need to do. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so sine inverse, so we just end, simply end up with sine inverse 3 over 3, which is 1, minus sine inverse of 0 over 3, which is just 0. So the sine inverse, uh, the sine inverse of 1 is 90 degrees, or pi over 2. We'll stick with our radians, so it's pi over 2. In other words, if you get the sine of 90 degrees or the sine of pi over 2, you'll get 1. Um, the sine of what will give you 0? Well, that's just simply going to be uh, 0. So we end up with uh, pi over 2 as our answer. Pi over 2 is our answer, or 90 degrees if you want to do it in degrees. Okay, so... Uh, that's it. That's it really for these uh, three examples. As I say, there are a few other um, uh, rules
tools like this that you'll find in your maths tables, just have a look at those uh, if you come across slightly different versions of this.